En Genesis lees ons, Genesis 1, in die begin het God die hemel in die aarde geskep. Die aarde was, was heel te mal onbewoonbaar. Het was donker op die diep waters, maar die geest van God het oor die waters gesweef. En toe sê God, laat daar licht wees, en daar was licht. God het gesê, die licht is goed, en hy het die licht en die donker van mekaar gesky. God het die licht dag genoem, en hy het die nacht, die donker nacht genoem. Dit het avond geword, en dit het morgen geword. Dit was die eerste dag. Toe het God gesê, laat daar licht wees, een gewelf wees, tussen die waters, om die waters van mekaar te sky, en so het het gebeur. God het die gewelf gemaakt, en die waters onder die gewelf gesky, van die waters boer die gewelf. God het die gewelf hemel genoem, dit het avond geword, en dit het morgen geword, dit was die tweede dag. Is dit nie net fenomenaal om te dink, hoe God skep die? God skep vir, God skep, Ik denk sommer om in hierdie groot stuk woord te dink, God skep vir verhouding. In die eerste plek skep God vir verhouding. My ma is een kunstenaar van formaat. Sy teken en skilder. En aan die onderkant van haar skilderij, ja, van haar prente, teken sy haar naam. En sy het een verhouding met dit wat sy geskep het. En op een manier is haar naam hier aan die onderkant van haar skepping sê en gee waarde aan die skilderij. Denk vir die oomlik, jy het in jou huis een skilderij met die naam Picasso onderaan geteken, of Michelangelo of Rembrandt. Daar die naam gee waarde aan dit wat geskep is. Die verhouding. Ek onthou dat my ma weet die eerste skilderij wat sy verkoop het aan haar collega's, en toe iemand in die huis kom vir sy praktijk, gesê ek sien daar, ek wil hulle koop, en die diep verhouding met haar meesterstukke, die meesterstukke wat sy in haar gevoel het sy maak. God maak meesterstukke. Dit wat hy geskep het is, boe ons begrip, boe ons verstand, ons kan nie dink hoe ons skepper met een kop en een hart en een kunstconnectie hierdie voortgebring het in verhouding nie. Ek dink aan die begin, vader sê en heilige geest, verhouding moet vloei, verhouding vloei. Binnen in hulle is liefde, een stroom kracht van liefde. En hulle maak toe klomp klein imago dei beelde van hulle, van God, van hom, van een God. En uit en dier hier die beelde vloei liefde en verhouding. Ewers kom hier die wete dat die handtekeningen van de almachtige God onder ons is en, en soos ons elkeen roep by die naam in verhouding en in die skeping, is daar iets wat wonderbaarlik is om te denken hoe is dit, dat hier die groot God, aan mij en jou dink. Oor die skeping, het ek gedink, wat is die, ons kan nie anders as om oor die skeping te gesels nie, om te dink en te droom, wat het in Godse droom gebeur vir die skeping. En vir vandag kan hier by ons, een wereld hoog aangeskrewe, astronomer en apply mathematician, professor David Block, om met ons te deel wat in die hart van God was, toe hy skep die hemel en die aarde. Professor Block. Always look up, Henrik. A singular honor to be here. A very warm welcome to each of our precious viewers. It's a question of Genesis. It's a question of creation. It's a question of beginnings. In our very first slide, we see the earth, the pale blue dot, and we see the Hubble Space Telescope in orbit about the earth. Three questions come to the fore in the next slide. We see here the planet Earth, And on the planet Earth, there are three questions which spring forth in my neurophysiological processes, and they are as follows. Why are we here? Where do we come from? 
And most importantly, where are we going? And I think those three questions epitomize the walk of billions of people on the planet Earth. In our next image, we see the planet Saturn. Now, Saturn is a most majestic planet with its incredible and majestic system of rings. In fact, telescopic after telescopic observation, as in the next slide, shows the grandeur, shows the splendor of Saturn. But you know, beloved, there's something much more than simply a mere creation. It is, as Henrik has said in his opening, it is a head, heart, and art connection. Yes, God, the masterful artist, has created Saturn with its beautiful system of rings. And in the next image, and I show you Saturn, and the little Earth is arrowed. What is man that thou art mindful of him, asked the psalmist. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? It is an exploration. It is a question of Genesis. It is, after all, a question of profound beginnings. In this next image, you see Saturn with its glorious system of rings. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man, what is immense, what is man, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visitest him. In this image, a spectacular image of the sun, you see our writhing, seething, closest star. The temperature at the center of the sun is 16 million degrees centigrade, which means that you can literally bake, fry, and boil simultaneously. And one flame on the sun is around 40 Earth diameters across. A glorious creation, a profound creation, but created for relationship. In fact, if you look at the next image of the sun, you can see the earth to scale. And the, again, the earth seems so minute compared to the grandeur of even our closest star, the sun. But God made two great lights, the greater light, the sun to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. In the next slide are our three most profound questions. And here you see an image of me with Professor Stephen Hawking, who is regarded as the second Einstein, one of the greatest physicists who ever lived. And he asked these three questions. Why are we here? Why are we here, beloved viewer? Where do we come from? And where are we going? In the next image is a beautiful view of the Pleiades star cluster. Now, beloved, the Pleiades star cluster is mentioned in the book of Job. And Job, despite all his misery and being covered from head to toe in boils and feeling the angst, the Freudian angst of remorse, despair, and depression, God says to Job, Job, can you make the Pleiades star cluster seen on your screen? How wonderful. It's the head connection. It's the art connection. But moreover, it's the heart connection. God is a masterful, the masterful artist. In the next slide is an image of part of a 100,000 million stars. If you had to count one star per second in this image, you would count for 2,500 years. You're looking at over 10 to the power of 11 stars, close to 10 to the 12, a million, million stars. But he calleth the stars by name. He calleth the stars by name. But then, but then he healeth the broken 
in heart. Oh, how wonderful in Psalm 147, he calleth the stars by name, but he healeth the broken in heart. In the next image, the stars are so manifest that they look like grains of veritable grains of sand on a beach. So numerous are the stars. And again, what springs to mind is this, the heavens, the veritable heavens declare the glory of God. I say it again, the heavens are not simply inanimate, but in a very real sense, the psalmist David impregnates this so magnificently. The heavens declare not only knowledge about God, but the veritable glory. The heavens declare the glory of God. A most interesting quote I came across, and I'd love to share it with you. It's written by Herman Melville from Moby Dick, and I quote, he saw God's foot, he saw God's foot upon the treadle of the loom and spoke it. And thereafter his shipmates called him mad. So man's insanity is heaven sense. So man's insanity is heaven sense. I urge you, beloved, today to recapture the wonder in your life. And in my life, I urge you today, beloved, to recapture the head, the heart, and the art connection. So many of us live in a mechanistic world driven by iPhones and social media. But we have to recapture the still small voice of God, beloved, which says, this is the way walking in it. And here in this slide, we see the horse-head nebula. And in the next slide, a close-up of the horse-head nebula. Just one or two astronomical facts here is that you're looking at vast gargantuan pillars of cosmic dust. What's so special about that? People ask, they say, Prof Block, what's so special about cosmic dust? Well, it's the stuff of which you and I are made. In Genesis, we read, and God created man from the dust of the earth. This is the stuff of which every viewer is made, carbon-based stardust. And the temperature of these little dust grains are around minus 253 degrees centigrade, around 20 degrees above absolute zero or zero degrees Kelvin. But you see, God has instituted everything you and I need for life. Jesus says, I am come that he might have life and life more abundantly. You are made of the stuff cooked inside the veritable interiors of stars. You are created out of carbon-based stardust. And here in this next image is a very close-up of the Horsehead Nebula. Almost looks like the viewer maxillofacial surgeon might like to view creation, wonder, awe, splendor, majesty, but above all, purpose. In this next image, appears to be a Picasso, but much better than a Picasso. Appears to be a Michelangelo, but much more profound than a Michelangelo. It's the veritable birth of stars. This whole series is on Genesis and relationship. And here God, in that, in that one incredible verse, and God created the heavens and the earth. In one majestic sweep, beloved, God goes and creates this veritable masterpiece. You see, God is the God of the infinite wisdom, is the God of the infinite care, is the God who signs off, as it were, every painting by name. In this next image, we see the Rosette Nebula, one of my beloved stellar maternity wards, in which baby stars are being born. We're looking around five to 6,000 light years back in time. So in other words, the light from this nebula has taken some five to 6,000 years to reach our eyes, traveling at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second in vacuum. 
The size of the central bubble in your screen is around 65 light years. One light year is around 10 million million kilometers. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man, what is immense that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. In this next image are veritable pillars of creation, huge areas, almost like rising columns of cosmic dust. Again, the significance to this is as follows. God the creator, God the creator creates the heavens, creates the earth, but creates this for you to look upon it in awe, in wonder, and to sit at his feet and look up into his eyes, flowing with inestimable grace. I have no words when looking at this image, but to think of an essay entitled Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson, who wrote, If the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how would men believe and adore and preserve for many generations the remembrance of the city of God which has been shown? Eta Carina, seen here towards the left of the image in the constellation of Carina. All majesty, creation, pillars of cosmic stardust. You know, if we take a close-up of one of those little columns, it almost looks like a leopard in the next slide, right? Crossing the African uh, savanna, racing to meet its target. But again, without these pillars of cosmic dust, you and I would not be here. And then we come to God's creation of galaxies. Here we see a galaxy known as Messier 83. It's a collection of 100,000 million stars. Almost a million million stars. They're beautiful. These are the veritable building blocks of our cosmos. In fact, in the next image is another galaxy, or rather two galaxies which are interacting. Messier 51, NGC 5194 slash NGC 5195. Beauty, all, dynamics. And that's what I love about the Creator, beloved, is that God is a dynamical God who cares for you in the now. He's not a distant God. He's a dynamical God who works not only in His creation in the whirlpool nebula seen on your screen, but who is intimately longing to have a dynamic relationship with you just as he has a dynamic relationship with his creation. We move on to clusters of galaxies, billions upon billions of them. Galaxies, clusters of galaxies. But I'd like to conclude with uh, approximately two or three images of myself and others standing under the aurora borealis. And you can see here my hands are raised in awe and in wonder. And here I am having a relationship with my creator because I'm standing here in awe and in wonder, lost in wonder and saying, oh, raising my hands and saying, oh my God, how great thou art. In fact, in our final image, you see the moon, you see a tree, you see a father, you see a child. But you see more than that, the child holding the hand of the father. Beloved, we live in a universe made and created by God. May God himself richly bless you. Thank you so much, Professor Block. Is that not fantastisch om te denken dat God geskip het en hij kijkt naar ons zijn meesterstuk. Zij ik het jou geskip en ik bewust ik roep jou bij die naam en ik kies jou voor verhouding. Hoe leef ik in die verhouding? God het die mens geskip als hij verteenwoordiger. Hij die mens geskip, man en vrouw het hij hulle geskip. Die imago dei die beeld. Terwijl hij daar beleef dat God het aan jou gedink. Hy het intentioneel geweet, jy moet hier wees. Ek het een vriend, hy is een van die identische tweeling. Uh, hulle is, um, lyk precies die selle, identische tweeling. Eendag is die boetie, ouderom 6, 7, 
baie bedroef, drie, vier maanden gaan hy dier die diep ding, sy oos vraag vir hom wat gaan aan, hy sê ek weet wat is die waarheid, hulle vraag wat is die waarheid, hy sê, jy het my aangeneem, hulle sê, maar hoe het ons jou aangeneem, jy lyk dan soos jou boetie, en Ivers het hy vir een oomlik vergeet, dat hy is deel van, hy is totaal in, hoe doen jy dit, mag jy tyd maak, om by Jesus uit te kom, door sy woord, door te gaan sit, door te gaan dink en te vraag, sal jy die oorvloedige skeppingsliefde vir my wees, dat ek kan weet, ek is in, ek is geskep in, ek is geskep vir, en die groot vraag, hoekom is ek hier, wat maak ek, wat, wat is die doel, dat jy by jou skepper kan hoor, wat hy met jou deel, mag deel van jou loop, wees om vir andere te sê, jy is in, Jesus het jou kom inmaak en inneem, en hierdie groot, mastieuse skepingsverhaal. Geliefde, jy is geskep, meesterlik, en jy is in. Amen. Kom ons bid, Jesus, dankie dat jy ons in een groot, groot skepingsverhaal deelgemaak het en in. Roep ons by die naam, ons is jy sin. Dank je vir die wete dat ons op een wonderbaarlijke manier geskep is, deel van u groot plan. Mag die wete ons oorweldig. Mag hierdie genade van Jezus, die skepper, die liefde van God, jou vader, en die krachtige teenwoordigheid van die heilige gees, met jou wees, vir altyd en altyd en altyd. Amen. 